Welcome back to the podcast, everyone. I'm your host, Tamara. Today, we are back with our fantasy series, and today we are discussing the first book in the Shepherd King duology. If you would like to see this in video format without the app breaks, you'll need to head on over to Patreon and sign up. We also have an after show available on Patreon and Spreaker. After shows and exclusive content are in audio only over on Spreaker. So if you're into video, you need to head on over to Patreon. Don't forget, you can also join me and my two co-hosts over on the Book Clubs app for even more bookish chats. Please subscribe and like the podcast wherever you're listening. If you want to reach out to me, you can find me pretty much everywhere at Shelf Addiction. Joining me today is feature co-host Casey from Heart Full of Ink. Welcome back, Casey. Hello, hello. I'm so excited to be here today. Yay. Are you ready for this? I'm so ready. Are you ready for this? I don't know, girl. I don't know. (laughs) I don't think you're ready for this. (laughs) I'm about to get ready. I'll tell you that. Uh, Okay. Tell everybody where they can find you online. You can find me on Facebook at Heartful of Ink, on Instagram at Casey underscore Heartful of Ink, or on my website, heartfulofink.com. All right. So before we get started, I'd just like to remind you that as always with Book Chats, we talk full spoilers here. So spoiler alert, you have been warned. Today we are discussing One Dark Window, written by Rachel Gillick. The audiobook is narrated by Lisa Cordelion, published September 27, 2022 by Orbit. The paperback is 399 pages. The unabridged audio comes in at 2 hours and 44. That's not right. 12 hours. <laughs> 12 hours. Do I wish it were two hours? <laughs> the unabridged audio comes in at 12 hours and 44 minutes. Casey, would you kindly share the synopsis? Elspeth needs a monster. The monster might be her. Elspeth Spindle needs more than luck to stay safe in the eerie, mislocked kingdom she calls home. She needs a monster. She calls him the Nightmare, an ancient, mercurial spirit trapped in her head. He protects her. He keeps her secrets. But nothing comes for free, especially magic. When Elspeth meets a mysterious highwayman on the forest road, her life takes a drastic turn. Thrust into a world of shadow and deception, she joins a dangerous quest to cure the kingdom of the dark magic infecting it. Except the highwayman just happens to be the king's own nephew, captain of the deserters, dustiers, sorry, the dustiers, and guilty of high treason. He and Elspeth have until solstice to gather 12 Providence cards, the key to the cure. But as the stakes heighten and their undeniable attraction intensifies, Elspeth is forced to face her darkest secret yet. The nightmare is slowly, darkly taking over her mind, and she might not be able to stop him. Okay, so before we dive in, first I'd like to make a note about the author. This is her first book, I found out. And just a little interesting tidbit, she has a BA in literary theory and criticism from UC Davis. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was definitely going to bring up that fact. Yeah. Yeah. Because that is a very important fact for everything I need to say. (laughs) It is. So that gives you kind of segue. You kind of got an idea what's about to happen here today. (laughs) Ooh. Are you guys ready for this? If you're familiar with us, or maybe if you're brand spanking new, I'm sure you can read the writing on the wall. (laughs) Okay. High level. What did you think when you finished the book? Oh, it's finally getting interesting now. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Sorry. Not sorry. No, don't apologize at all. I thought, um, okay, great. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> okay <laughs> finally um, yeah finally uh, so, something interesting is happening yeah I thought generally speaking this book had a lot of words mm-hmm. and nothing was really happening for most of the book mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I hate that yeah so I don't know where to start start at the top of your list <laughs> First of all, the very first thing, this should have been written in third person. Okay. This should not have been first person. Mm-hmm. And I am critiquing that very heavily because of her education. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, this reads like a person who has only written in third person and does not understand character depth. 
Okay. Um, for those of you new here, I am an editor, so this is my wheelhouse, and I wanted to take a red pen to these pages because big picture. When you write in first person, you are supposed to be in that person's head. You are supposed to feel what they feel, think what they think, follow along with their thought patterns, and essentially become that character. Mm -hmm. In third person, you have a boundary with them. Like you know who they are, you follow them around, but you are not so intimately inside their head. Mm Mm-hmm. This was written as third person, but with I statements. This Mm. should have been third person the whole time. And that's part of the issue with um, Elspeth being bland and boring because she had no personality and we couldn't see it inside her brain. So that seems like a really big technical miss. How did that happen? I I have no idea. And that's what's really been driving me crazy with this is because, first of all, she should know better. This author, Rachel, has been studying literary criticism for years. If she got her degree in this, she should know better. Mm -hmm. Her editors should know better. Mm -hmm. I picked this up and I'm chapter one. I'm like, no, 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 no. This does not need to be first person. This needs to be third person. Mm -hmm. This is essentially written. There were several scenes where she's literally just narrating what's going on around her. But we're not in her head. We're not getting her reactions. We don't know what's happening. It's like every time the nightmare seems to take precedence over what's happening, it does read like we're just watching a scene. Not even that. Um... But yes, like that was a fun thing to see her kind of lose herself to him again, even though she didn't really have a lot of personality, which I will get into next. Mm -hmm. But um, one of the earliest scenes where her uncle's like, we're going to go to the party at the castle and I have the card and my daughter I own. I need you to be at my side when I barter this like that whole scene was written from her. The nightmare is not very prevalent yet. Yeah. But we have paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs of what everybody else is doing and what's going on around everybody yeah, else. You could but get it, that first person. Yeah, but that that should have been in third person. Yeah. And that could have really highlighted how she fades into the background around people. If When it's in first person, you're supposed to be getting those reactions and those like, oh, this is me watching my uncle say this, and this is how I feel about this, and this is how I want to speak up about this or react to this. And there was none of that. And that happened several times throughout, but that was like the most prevalent. Now that you gave that example, I can think of a couple of times where we're knowing what other people are moving and saying and doing, and she's not there. She's not Mm -hmm. present. Yeah. And if you're in her mind, Uh you should... It should feel like we're watching all of that. It's almost like this author has only written in third person, but decided to try first person to like be cool. Because I know some authors do that where they're like, oh, readers only like first person. So I have to write it this way. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Or maybe because she's going for the YA audience. Does she put this in first person? Book talk is very because into first person too, and this is being hyped as a book talk book. And no, this would have been so much better as third person because again, we could have seen her disappear more. Mm-hmm. And third person limited does exist. Mm-hmm. The most popular, commonly known one is Harry Potter, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. We follow Harry Potter. We're not quite inside his head, but we still know his thought process. We still know what he's thinking and what he wants to do and how he feels. Mm -hmm. And this would have been so much better as that. So that was like my first right off the bat from chapter one. I'm annoyed. I want this (laughs) instead. Mm -hmm. What about you? What's first on your list? Okay. So I kind of lost my train of thought there, but... Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. You're good, girl. You're good. I totally lost what I was going to say. Come back to me. Okay. Let's talk about how she doesn't have any personality. Okay. So 
I noticed that about her because about maybe I was like 70% in or 80% in when, you know, that whole card thing happens with the chalice at the table. Mm -hmm. And that is the first time in the entire book I had a reaction to her. I'm out loud saying, you dumb bee, what are you doing? (laughs) He's trying to help you. Like that was the very first time I had Mm -hmm. any kind of reaction to something she was saying or doing. Oh, I'm screaming that a lot. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But like that was my first time actually. And I noted it. I reacted so viscerally to that section. I'm like, wow, she was just totally bland up until this very moment because I had no opinion of her. I'm just riding along in mm-hmm. the passenger seat of this story, mm-hmm. not giving two shits about her until this very moment when she pisses me off. <laughs> yeah. That's no, she bad. has no personality. Her whole personality is I'm going to go sit on a rock and stare at the water and eat an apple and wedge of cheese because I have to be alone. You know I spent else? 11 years alone doing nothing. I have no hobbies. I have no skills. I can't do needlework or throw swords. I do nothing. I just sit here and stare <sighs> off and eat berries or whatever. That flies in the face of what the Shepherd King was trying to accomplish with her. Like, mm-hmm. why would he be cool with her doing that? And like, why wouldn't he be trying to like push her towards something if he wanted her to kind of give herself up eventually for her to spend 11 years in this state of mm-hmm. like just bullshitting around? I mm-hmm. guess maybe he figures what's well, another decade or two. Well, yeah, no, she's a child when he first comes in. But that's so the like, point where yeah, he can let, manipulate let her, her the best. Off a bit. <laughs> point where you can manipulate her the best you can have her out there doing wild shit like you know (laughs) oh yeah um you know i'm just saying like that kind of doesn't really match the (laughs) Mm -hmm. but yeah no Uh. she has no personality she has no nothing there's nothing to her and again, in the first chapter, when she's trying to be like, oh, I, I have my bland face on. Let me rub my face so everybody thinks I'm so bland. You and I are wish bland. I could be I own, who's just free and <sighs> herself. And <clears throat> so one thing I don't also quite get about Elspeth is once she has the understanding mm-hmm. that, hey, the more I ask him for help, the more is to my own detriment in the long run. Mm-hmm. She continues to help. ask him. Yeah. More, in, in situations more that were not dire. Yeah. It yeah. seemed like it was increasing more. And I'm like, mm-hmm. what this is? Because she's a dumb dummy. <laughs> she's so dumb. This doesn't Where make she's sense. She's like, this is my downfall. But I can't lie. So help me. Help me. I'm so weak and helpless. Help me. I... That I can't, that scene, y'all, I cannot get it out of my head. Like, I swear to God, even the guy, uh, Raven, her little love interest, he breaks into her mind using the card. He promised mm-hmm. he wouldn't do it, but he's like, calm down. I'm trying to help you. Calm down. <laughs> like, lady, listen to me. And I'm like, the whole time, he said, he asked you, what happened to your arm? Not how did it happen? Answer the question. Mm -hmm. And I said that right before the character did. I'm like, what is wrong with you? You're an idiot. Oh, I broke my wrist. Yeah. (laughs) She's an idiot. It's broken. I hate main characters that are that fucking stupid. Like, Mm -hmm. she is so dumb. She is so dumb and so bland. And there is absolutely nothing redeemable about her not that she's a bad person there's just nothing to root for yeah that's like, exactly why it. like why, why should do i care, I care about for her, her yeah when she's gonna go sit on a rock and stare at the river and have a pity party she's having had 11 years of pity parties i don't know so i also found the character of the nightmare, aka the Shepherd King, a little bit also perplexing mm-hmm. because at times, you know, he wants his goal is to take her over and be driving her body, right? Mm-hmm. 
But he also tries to help her, like not in a physical way, but like in a mental way. Like he's still trying to help her, even though he wants her to keep. I I think I was unclear why if I if I want to drive your body and take you over, I'm not going to help you with anything as long as it doesn't kill maim or kill you. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to help you. I thought his character was really more interesting, one of the most interesting people in the entire book, because he had that quandary. He was back and forth, and he had some empathy, but he also was like, had ulterior motives. Like, for example, this is a perfect example of this. Like, how does this helped her, but not him necessarily? Why would you keep trying to force Elspeth to tell Raven the truth? You gotta tell him, just tell him. Like that would help her, not you. Like, what is the point? Is that just you feeling empathy about that one situation? Because her it telling- might have been empathy, or I wonder if he thought Raven would ha- be able to help him since he had the other nightmare card. And well, I thought that, like, maybe part of his soul was in the other cards, so he wanted, like, his whole soul back. Well, I know once she told him what was what, he was Which took able... for fucking ever. It did. And then she couldn't just say it. She's like, look, I'm like, this bullshit. Like, just say it. Just say it. What is the problem? That whole thing was also dragged out. But mm-hmm. I guess once he knew, and once it was clear that Elspeth was no longer at home... I guess it did make it easier for him to, I guess, protect the body. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) He understood, you know what I'm saying? He understood the assignment at the end, you know? (laughs) Yes. Yep. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) No, for me, it was very, I thought that the king was like, one, trying to help her to be like, come on, girly. He's been truthful with you. You have got to be truthful with him if you want any sort of relationship going on here. And that's what I was yelling at her when I was yelling out loud was just like, tell him the fucking truth. Yeah, just tell him. Um, But again, like maybe there was something in the other card that he wants since there are only two cards and he sold himself to make the cards, I guess, or something like that. But like. I just figured there was something about the card since Raven had it and was using it. I assumed it was something with that. But I don't know. know. Well, he definitely didn't want her to touch any other cards because he didn't want any company in there with her, with him. So I'm assuming she's never touched another card, right? Oh, go ahead. How many other souls are trapped in the cards? Just one per card. Are there actual souls in every card? Because I thought it was just the king. Like, there's magic in every card, but, like, he's the only soul person who, like, traded his soul for magic and got absorbed into the card. So I thought he was the only one. So I didn't think that if she actually touched any other card, she would absorb it. Well, she said she absorbs the cards. And I'm not necessarily thinking there's a soul, quote unquote, of a person in each card. Okay. But maybe he had to, like, trade a fox or something for a card. So does that mean she would be talking to a fox if she picked up a card that he was traded for I a don't fox? I know. Yeah, I, um, I did not understand that at all. I, yeah, I don't know. But I feel like it, when they when the author explained it, it seemed like there was something... He didn't just give his soul for all the cards. He gave his soul for that card. That's what I thought, which is why I thought he was only in that card. So if she touched anything else. Well, I assumed it was the two, the nightmare cards, since there's only two nightmare cards. I I assumed that was like together. But all the other cards, like the maiden card and the well card and everything else, I assumed that there's just magic in that. And I wasn't sure if she would absorb the magic or if this was just special because he was in there and they were part of the prophecy. Honestly, I thought it was just part of the prophecy, not her fever magic. I feel like there is something like they kept going with the theme. Nothing is for free. Mm -hmm. So something had to be traded for each of the cards. But what Mm -hmm. is the question? 
Maybe not a human soul for every card, but something else. Something I didn't else. think a human soul was for every card, but yeah. yeah. So, like, just like every um, card has a magic, that it also has a weakness, like a mm-hmm. consequence, which we had to, we heard about a couple of them because, like, the chalice, you know, if you use it, it's a true serum, right? It turns liquid into true serum. But it mm-hmm. also turns it into poison if you overuse it. <laughs> yep. Um, and also the scythe. We heard about that quite a bit, right? Because the one prince had it. It controls mm-hmm. others. But also on the flip side, he has like extreme pain from overuse. Yeah. yeah, it's like stabbing in his brain or something. Right. So I think with everything having a balance, I just feel like maybe we just didn't delve deep enough into the creation of the cards yet. But there's something else that's going to come out about the creation of those cards, I feel like. Oh, definitely. Now that the king is in control and he has his memories and he knows what's what, I think we're going to get a lot more of the backstory in the Mm -hmm. next book, Mm -hmm. which I'm excited for. Like, that's going to be interesting. And I'm also excited to see more of the king because he has personality. He has plans. He has goals. He can fight. He can do stuff. He's not bland so speaking of the cards what did you think about the magic and how they worked like tapping the card three times what did you think about that to use the cards i thought that was an interesting take i know three is usually like a good number with witches and magic so i thought that Mm -hmm. was interesting to like turn on turn off with three taps um but honestly it was just kind of Mm-hmm. Meh. Like it didn't really feel because like the whole magic system in itself, I'm not sure. Because there's two parts. So people get magic from too much time in the mist, right? That's how people and they got sick. And then I they, get, they just got sick and infected and it had not and I thought it but, came from the mist. No. I thought the mist just ate people. Okay, so there again, so we there's some confusion because mm-hmm. I thought people like had exposure to the mist somehow, and then kids would get sick <laughs> and then they end up with some kind of magic. But they didn't want them to have any kind of natural given, you know, magic that way. They only wanted the cards to have the magic, which is why they went around slaughtering the children and people who got sick. No? I assumed. So based on like that first page, that first, not quite prequel, but memory from when she was nine, she's like, everybody gets the fever because they get sick. And then if they but get But everyone infected, doesn't get it, though. Everyone no, doesn't get it. No, not everybody gets it. So I wasn't yeah. sure what that was. Maybe it is the mist. But hmm. I thought the mist just ate people. Like when um, Jasper ran off and broke her ankle, I thought that was just the mist trying to eat her. And I don't even think it eats people. I think it eats some people, but I think there's something else there. Like when that kid got away and he went after his parents, I'm going to, I wouldn't be surprised if that kid showed back up. I'm like, oh, he's definitely because he's infected. Yeah. So So he's safe from the mist. So he'll be okay. He'll come back. But maybe they'll kill him and sacrifice him and his infected blood. I feel Which like is a whole there's other like plot point I have to discuss. Com- the community out there in the mist of people that aren't That dead. would be fun. Yeah. Like, I just... I, again, so again, the magic system isn't quite right. It's because, not... Yeah. Yeah. Like, it, it's there, but I feel like there's so many issues that she didn't address. And maybe it's because Elspeth doesn't know shit. Like, she doesn't know anything, so we don't know anything. And unfortunately, the family she was with, you know, all of what's-his-face's family, they didn't really explain to her everything. You would have thought the youths would have had the most knowledge, and through her learning, Mm -hmm. we could have learned as the audience. Oh, absolutely. But we didn't really get that. No, because why the fuck should they trust her when she's not telling them the truth about anything either? Well, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I felt like we needed more information. We definitely needed more. I'm just, I'm salty because they told her everything and she told them nothing. (laughs) She 
said, oh, I can see the colors of the cards. I can see the colors of the cards. Which isn't true without mm. the nightmare yeah. king. She wouldn't be able to do that. Mm-hmm. Actually, her power is wackadocious. Like, what kind of power is that shit anyway? I absorb the cards. Yeah, that's weird. I don't know. I And the card wasn't a dud after she touched it, right? Like, it was still... It still had magic in it. Did it, though? I assume somebody used it. Her Who uncle... has it? Or the Who king. The king has it now. Because the uncle gave it away so his daughter can be uh, the queen, married so, to the prince. It must have magic because how wouldn't he ta- tap it to see what they could happen? They would have tapped it. Yeah. So wait, let me see if I can find what happens with it. So there's two nightmare cards. Mm-hmm. So it allows them to speak in the minds mm-hmm. of others. Okay, so i guess the magic still works and who well how did okay so what about the second card who who what had to happen to make the second card of well, that raven has it and it works so right, again that's who, why i was assuming part of his soul was in there since they were the two? pair yeah like so you he, think his he soul gave up his split? soul to make the two cards that's what i assumed okay, but i could be wrong because i don't know it was I, never really explained <sighs> I don't I feel like with how much the um the king was running his mouth at the end if his soul was split we would have been told, right? You think? I would th- you would think so. I don't know. <laughs> and it's so <laughs> unnecessarily convoluted. Uh, yeah, I I don't know now. I have no clue. And I am curious, which is, I guess, a good thing, because now I want to read on and make sure that everything is tied up in a neat bow and I have a clear understanding, which I will be upset if I don't at the end of the second book. If I still am not clear about the magic Mm -hmm. and the rules, I'm going to be mad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. (laughs) I'm going to be pissed. Yeah, because I understand, like, trying to leave something for later, but... But this is later. Book two is going to be later. And also, this book was, like, what, 400 freaking pages long? Yeah. There's enough time for you to explain what's going on. You don't need to be coy and wishy-washy and explain some things, but not everything. And it's so frustrating. It is frustrating. And there's a way to do it in a way that makes sense. Like, I think Mm -hmm. about the other books that we've read. Like, hell, I can even think of, like, Discovery of Witches. Like, there was a, you know, there's a lot of books, but not every single thing. Part of the magic was told to us in the first book. But the way that it was, like, rolled out, Mm -hmm. you had an understanding A, then B, then C. Mm -hmm. And there was an order to it. (laughs) Absolutely, yes. Yeah, I mean, hell, even the Outlander series, you know, we have an idea of how the magic works and then you get a little more and a little Mm -hmm. more. But this was just too vague. I I don't know if vague is the right word, but it's just not enough. It's not enough. It's convoluted and unnecessary and very literary. Like it's she took that literary criticism degree and applied it to genre and it's not the overlap does not work yeah okay let's take a quick break (laughs) when we come back there's some more things on my list i want to talk about yep and then we're gonna rate the book oh no (laughs) yeah you don't want to miss that (laughs) <laughs> That's going to be a fun time. So you guys check out those commercials by listening to those. You are supporting the podcast while you are listening. Hop on over to Amazon and check out the book review journal available right now. Pick up your copy. That would help us out. And we'll be right back. Okay. Welcome back, everybody. Did you have something else on your list before? I have so many okay. Let's things. move to your next <laughs> item. Okay. I need you to explain this to me like I'm five. (laughs) Because I do not understand this plot line. Okay. The yous have come together Mm -hmm. because their youngest, Emery, is infected Mm 
mm-hmm. and the king has decided that he, Emery, is going to be the sacrifice he kills after he gathers all the cards and destroys the mist, and he needs the infected blood to kill the mist. Mm-hmm. Why? But but before, so there's so many plot holes with this because why are they now the ones trying to get all the cards instead of the king risking everything to save Emery when Emery is basically going to die within the next few months anyway? Like I don't um, know the Emery connection for the king side is lost on me. Yeah, because. The king is fine with Raven being infected. That's totally okay. And he's not going to be sacrificed. It has to be Emery who's being sacrificed, even though you find hundreds of kids a day, essentially, and any one of them could be sacrificed. And Elspeth kind of goes back and forth on whether the king is super evil See, or super nice. I, and, I didn't even think it had to do with necessarily him as a sacrifice. I thought they were kind of keeping them to kind of keep Raven in check. Oh, really? Like, I, didn't get I got that. your brother. Was... Like, you know, the he's there. He's not doing well. We're going to take care of him, quote unquote, and, until he dies. But hey, as long as we've got him. Because that was a stipulation that the Nightmare did at the end. It was like, hey, you got to let him go home. That's... Yeah, no, the, their whole plan was to save Emery, except Emery can keep escaping the castle and has done it like two or three times in the book. Like he escapes okay. and literally goes home. And they're like, no, we got to take you back to the castle so you can be under guard until That's you get so sacrificed on the solstice. That doesn't make sense because the U's were going to kill the doctor to take yeah. the blood. So, so the king could have killed the doctor. The king could take literally anybody and kill anybody. He didn't have to kill Emery. But that was that their doesn't whole make sense. plan. They're like, we have to save Emery. We have to save Emery. Except- well, they didn't want to save him at, like from death. They wanted to save him from the magic. So, yeah, they want to put the cure in him, but he's right. already so far gone, coughing up blood, losing his memory. I'm not sure the cure is going to work on him, but he's family. So they want to cure him, but he's also family to the King. And so for the first part of the book, Elspeth is like, the King is evil. The King is evil. He's so evil. And then as soon as she finds out, he, I highlighted the sentence. As soon as she found out he was going to kill Emery, she's like, but why? He's such a nice and loving King. How can you do this to his family? And I was like, bitch, what the fuck? Hmm. Maybe there's something else because I don't understand what the point would be for mm-hmm. the king to. So the king thinks that getting all of the cards will get rid of the mist. Well, there's there's the um, rumor, theory, whatever, where you get all the cards, you spill the blood of an infected person, and that gets rid of the mist. And that's what they've been trying to do for 500 years, except they have never found the cards in 500 years. So, so there's all of a two sudden, distinct philosophies on this, because the youths think, if I gather all the cards, mm-hmm. spill this dude's blood, we can cure people mm-hmm. from that. So a cure versus the mist are two completely use, different there uses was, of the cards. It was some poem that they said. I'm trying to... Because the youths didn't say a word about the mist. They were trying to heal their mm-hmm. their kid. And I don't see the correlation between getting rid of the mist and healing others. I don't understand. There's two. I'm trying they're to working find with it. two different frameworks for the same set of cards. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it was one of those weird, it was an all italic spell thing. One of the poems. Um, okay, on page 131 or 130, she says, if the deck is united, will I truly be cured? And the king says, who says you need a cure? And she's like, be serious. He laughs. He goes, I know what I know. My secrets are deep, but long have I kept them and long will they keep. But that's not what I was looking for. So the king, by the king, y'all, she's talking about the nightmare. Mm-hmm. Not the, the, the actual one in her king. head. The right. nightmare. Yeah, sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, 
It was in the book. So the cards, the mist, the blood, they are all woven together. They're balanced delicate like spider silk. Unite all 12 Providence cards with the black blood of salt and the infection will be healed. Blunder will be free of the mist. So two things will happen. So two things will happen. That still doesn't make sense for the king to want to do that because he uses people who have powers Mm -hmm. that he can find useful. So Mm -hmm. why would he want people to be cured of that? Exactly. I think he wants to get rid of the mist because the mist is eating people. But... And I'm not Why sure is the mist he is holding Emery doing hostage? That. Why is the family... But you know, that's just the thing. We've never seen the mist eat anyone. No, we haven't. So They're I'm just not sure that's what it. it's doing. Yeah, no, I believe you. That's why I'm air quotes over here. <laughs> eating people in air quotes. Yeah. I it's think, just... Um, none of this makes sense. No. And the fact that Emery keeps escaping and everybody is like, oh, sweet Emery, you got to go back to the castle now. It's okay. Like, what the but fuck? What's so messed up is that the the um 500 old king, dead king, who is the shepherd king, mm-hmm. he could just tell. He could just mm-hmm. say what the fucking problem is. He could just say. Yes, he but can. He, he talks in these riddles. And poems, mm-hmm. which is annoying as hell. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't. And actually, that's another point of contention I have. And did you notice this or not? So the characters talking. Some sometimes they talk in this old way, like the Shepherd King does, mm-hmm. and then they turn around and say something very modern mm-hmm. and use some slang that's very modern. But yet mm-hmm. you're talking in this old way two pages yes. ago. Yes. I'm like, what? She is- did that with the sentences and descriptions as well. Um, yeah, no, that was very annoying and very glaringly obvious to me because my editor hat was on and I was mentally scribbling with my red pen the whole time. Mm-hmm. Um, no, she very much tried to be like old timey and literary and very like, ooh. I'm going to write this sentence in a way where I don't need to word use the word that. And I was like, just use the word. Just mm-hmm. say that. It's okay. You can say that. That is a good word, right? Like, there were some times where she would just twist herself into knots with these sentences. Yeah. And I was like, you don't need to be this convoluted to say this. Yeah. And then in the next couple and then in the next one saying hey you kicked my ass twice like or something like Mm -hmm. that doesn't (laughs) Mm -mm. yeah no it was it was really inconsistent i I picked up on that oh okay uh okay let's talk about the vibes did you think that the dark gothic vibes were accomplished no no I don't either. One of my notes, more dark. Yeah. I thought this no, was supposed to be this gothic. This was so bland and boring. Again, we're in somebody's head who has no personality. Um, It was so... I guess the setting was a little gothic because there was a castle and some mist and sometimes it was night out and, oh, you're walking down the path in the dark. Ooh, scary. But, like, no. But not really. Not really. So I feel like that's part of my problem. I love an atmospheric mm-hmm. vibe. Mm-hmm. And with that, and I don't mean to just tell the author what to do, but... I feel like there were a couple of things that could, of course, corrected the vibe for me. Mm -hmm. One would be make this an adult fucking book, not a YA book. Yes. Make it adult. Make it more dark, Mm -hmm. more gore. Like, let's see what happens to someone when they go in the mist. Show me what happens to someone. Or, you know, make the mist scary. Like, make the mist a character. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm show the mist eating people god damn it like don't make me use air quotes about the mist Mm -hmm. the one time in the entire book when somebody like 
Jasper gets lost in the mist and her eyes are glazed over and her ankle is broken and they're running around lost. I was like, okay, maybe this is a little gothic, but no, they immediately found her. It was totally fine. Yeah. Her brother just like touched her forehead and then she's cured and I wouldn't mind fine. some screaming of bloody murder or mm-hmm. something. Like, I don't know. Give me something. It just needed, there needed to, be- to be more monsters more monsters more More monsters more death more yes more everything and like to me the way this book was presented this would be a book that hey it's fall vibes give we're lighting my fire we're sipping on something warm and i'm about to read this you know dark gothic book and it felt like not that no this felt like a typical ya fantasy book With a young maiden who has no personality, (laughs) who has no skills, and she gets thrust into this journey where she has to save the day and rescue the people because she magically has powers when she calls for help from the monster in her head. But the rest of the time, she's just a maiden sitting there doing nothing, twiddling her thumbs, having pity parties. God. This hoe couldn't even ride a fucking horse. What a fiasco. <laughs> I laughed at that scene. I am, I am a bitch. I am a bitch, but I laughed. I'm like, what? No. Yeah, no, she cannot do anything. And that's worse than a Mary Sue character who comes in throwing knives, kicking ass, taking names. Like, Give me something. Give me a skill. If she was a book nerd who spent her entire life in the library reading about the history and knowing potions and knowing how to do stuff, that would be interesting. That would give her some personality or a hobby or a trait that I can connect with. Oh, yeah. But she has nothing. Yeah. Like even the part where they go to her father's estate and they're looking for the card. Essentially, they do all of that. And what ends up happening is, you know, after the chalice incident, she Mm -hmm. pukes her ass, you know, out, basically. Mm -hmm. And then they heal her. And she's in bed. Oh, oh, weak. And the father comes in, hands her the card. Like, oh, do you like this guy for real? Oh, let me give you the card then. Yeah. Like, what? No. I was like, what the fuck is this? handed it to her? No. Like, an engagement present? Here you go. Here's the card. That was so frustrating. It was Ugh. so <laughs> frustrating. Like, what was the point of all of this? And I swear, if they get that last card and it's something dumb as f- hell, were they I'm just... I'm pretty sure he admitted on that last page that it's buried with him or buried <laughs> under the tree. Yeah. Or something. Like, it, it felt like he said, I know where it's buried. I know where it is. And I'm like, are you just going to walk up to your grave and dig it out of your grave? And hand it to them? Here you and go. And hand it to them? Pretty sure he's going to try and kill the line of Rowans, but like... Yeah. <laughs> that might be worth it. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so let's talk about the romance a little bit. What romance? Well, they had a couple of scenes. And personally, you know, I'm not a fan of a monster in your head that's always there. And then you're going to be like, let's have a hot and heavy makeout sesh. Um, He's there. Like, he's there. He's listening. He's feeling it, too. Yeah, that's a little weird to me. And I couldn't Very quite weird. separate it out, even though he Mm-mm. was supposedly quiet or asleep a, maybe in a corner buying his own business i don't know i don't uh-uh 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 uh i feel like again this might have been something i i don't think it was necessary at all no it really wasn't and it it was so forced and so bland and there was nothing to root for with this romance they were just two hot people who looked at each other and said wow you're hot now we're in love Mm -hmm. because i don't even know why he liked her he said he fell for her the second Second. time he saw her he made a joke well maybe the second time time. yeah yeah (laughs) like (laughs) so you just looked at her face and said wow she's hot i love you like that's literally it because at one point he was like oh yeah um, when she suggested that we fake be engaged, I said no because I want you too much. And I was like, at that point, you've talked to her twice. 
<laughs> what what is there to want? I don't know. You, you don't question. know her personality. You don't know anything about her. All you knew about her is that she said she could see cards. That's all you knew. That's it. Mm -hmm. And then she got so pissed at him for lying to her and hiding secrets and only speaking in half truths and answering questions with other questions. And I was like, bitch, what do you think you do? Doing the same damn thing. You were doing the same exact thing. You are mm -hmm. not telling him the truth. You're barely giving him half truths. You're lying and hiding. And he's so in love with you that he implicitly trusts everything you say. And anybody who questions you gets punched in the face because he can't even begin to fathom that you would lie to him, even though that's all you're doing. He is blindly in love with her. So blindly in love. And I don't get yeah. why. I don't know. It's weird. And I don't And she's I like, don't, yeah, he's hot. I like him because he's hot. He's that's so not hot. Enough. That's not enough for me, not by a mile. Um mm -hmm. there's nothing to root for there. No. Like, and I'm all for people looking at each other and being like, You're hot, let's bang. Mm -hmm. Good. Do it. Have fun. Consent and have fun with each other. Like that that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. But don't tell me this is an epic romance of epic proportions and they're going to be together forever because they're hot and that's it. Like, give me something. Yeah. But she has no personality. He doesn't really have much of a personality. He just broods a lot and loves his brothers and that's likes it. to fight, I guess. Yeah. Um, I did lose my train of thought. Oh, but no. <laughs> I found I found it. The the poem. It's in chapter three in the ebook. It's on page 38. It says, The twelve call for each other when the shadows grow long, when the days are cut short and the spirit is strong. They call for the deck, and the deck calls them back. Unite us, they say, and we'll cast out the black. At the king's namesake tree. The black blood of with the black blood of salt, all twelve shall together bring sickness to a halt. They'll lighten the mist from mountain to sea, new beginnings, new ends, but nothing comes free. Mm. Mm -hmm. So that's how they're going to cure the sickness and hmm. get rid of the mist. Okay. So, yeah. Well, oh. anyway, <laughs> you want to talk about the secondary characters? Because I got some issues with Ione. Yeah, let's do it. First of all, I don't think Elspeth knows her cousin at all. No, she doesn't. Not even a little Not bit. Not even a little bit. Mm -mm. Like, the way she kept going on and on and on about how beautiful she was, I was like, this is starting to sound a little gay. <laughs> I know gay women who who <laughs> eulogize their girlfriends this way, so this is sounding a little gay. Okay. No shade, but like, okay. this is your cousin that you're <laughs> like, oh, but the gap in her teeth. And her blonde hair, I love her so much. Which is weird because, like, it's not like she was, like, a little hermit who didn't look like anything either. Like, I could kind of see this if she was supremely jealous or envious. Yeah. Maybe? But I don't know I, what that was supposed to be. But she was like, oh, I wish Ione would just be her true self. She should be herself with her gap in her teeth. And I have to stare at her endlessly. I was like, this is this is getting weird. Well, she did but, say she wanted to be like her. Yeah. But I that guess, is, I you're right, it's kind of weird. It was weird. It's kind of escalated. Yeah. But, okay, so in the beginning, Ione is all like, oh, he's he's just a lovely prince who needs help. He, just, he knows not that he does wrong, or however she phrased it in her old English way. Mm -hmm. She was like, oh, he's... He's such a handsome prince. And I was like, okay, so she's obviously in love with him and going to accept this proposal. And then Elspeth is like, I need to forbid you from doing this because you're not allowed to go do anything. And then mm -hmm. afterward, she has the maiden card and she's prettier or whatever. And she's like, yes, I want to be powerful. Mm -hmm. I was like, good for you. Mm -hmm. hmm. It's a shitty thing that you're going through, but good well for you. You I at least can't. have goals and plans and aspirations. Yeah, I think she always wanted to be powerful. And I think that 
Mm-hmm. She was fine with the maiden card because it's easier to be powerful when you don't care so much about anything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I mean, clearly she is being mistreated by the prince. Oh, absolutely. It's yeah, obvious. No, he is a dick. Yeah. And she should not defend him. But she should kill him after they get married and then become queen and rule over everybody. You know, I think, like you said earlier, she doesn't know her cousin. I think she's got something up her sleeve for him. Mm-hmm. Like, she, you know, during the whole chalice thing, yeah. she even tried to, I told you what happened to her, you know, so you could tell there's something in there mm-hmm. that she's got another plan. Maybe she will kill him. Maybe she'll. I think she will because she a- didn't. She ask him, "Have you been sleeping with other women?" Mm-hmm. Was that her or somebody else? It was her at the table, okay. and I'm like, "Oh, is she going to try to use that out of getting out of marrying him, or using that to like to take him like down in another kind of way?" Because they're I not feel like married it's to take yet. Him down. Yeah, they're yeah. not married yet, but it's still yeah. one of those things where she's like, "Okay, confirmed that you're cheating on me. Confirmed that you're an asshole. Mm-hmm. Definitely gonna." kill you in your sleep one night yeah (laughs) yeah no she has so much potential and i wish this book was about her instead of elspeth because elspeth has none of that well i don't know if the book was about her she might have become bland yes that is unfortunate (laughs) yeah it it Uh seems that only the secondary characters have an ounce of personality because they have to fight against the main characters and be like hey you're being stupid right now Mm -hmm. why are you being stupid why do you trust her so much yeah she's obviously lying to you why do you trust her he's like because she's hot i trust her because i love her and she's hot yeah oh my gosh uh what'd you think about the brothers almond hoth Eh. Like, Elm, I think, is a bit of an asshole, although not as much as Hoth. But I liked that he, you know, questioned Raven and, you know, constantly said, why do you trust her so much? Mm -hmm. That was good. Raven needs somebody like that in his corner because he has no brain or he only thinks with his below decks brain. Um, Yeah, because, I mean, Elm is clearly loyal to Raven. Mm-hmm. The f- despite the fact that he hates that he is he hates that he is but he is mm-hmm. for better or worse for better or worse for and, richer or poorer. yeah he's like stuck with him because you know he fucking hates his family mm-hmm. so he's found a home with the use which is probably one of the reasons why he's so loyal to him to the point where honestly i'm surprised that elspeth outed herself in front of him i'm surprised she didn't say make him leave and then mm-hmm. i'll tell you yeah Yep. But mm. then she got captured by the king a couple chapters later, so it doesn't matter. Because of her own fucking uncle. I'm like, what the hell? Oh, yeah. No, he was awful and going to betray her from the beginning. Like, yeah. obviously, even she was shocked when he traded the card to have his daughter marry a prince. And she's like, oh, shock. I had no idea who my uncle is. And I was like, bitch. You don't know was, him anyway. This was his plan the whole time. When he announced that he had the card, but he was see, staring at his daughter saying, you need to be there with me. That's like, her, what else did you think was going to happen? That's her uncle-in-law, technically. That's mm-hmm. not her blood. The auntie not her is blood, her blood. No. Her mother's so le- sister's sister. husband. Yeah, so yeah. leave it to the outsider to come in and just do shit to your family. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. That was crazy. I don't know. Okay, let's see. Who else? Were the, who? What other secondary ca- characters are worth a, d- a quick discussion? Um, I'm going through the list you sent me because there were so many people in this book. Mm-hmm. The Willows. Who are they again? Like Orith and Flick? oh, they were the doctors, the physicians oh, okay. who work with the U's. Okay. So they're the ones who are like, we know you're infected, but we're going to keep taking care of you mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. not turn you in to the okay. evil king. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, all the rest of these kind of people were just like around and they pop up yeah, here and there. They're around. They didn't really have. Too much screen Anything. time. Yeah, they're just yeah. around. So. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> should, is there anything else or should we just bite the bullet and rate it? Do you have more things on your list? That was, those are the main points on my list. I I have more that I can complain about, but we'd be here for another three hours and I don't want to do that. Okay. Okay, so I'm kind of torn right now mm-hmm. because when we started this discussion, I had a rating and I'm not sure the rating holds still. I'm not sure. And I think you're in the same boat. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So here's the thing. I had heard a lot of good things about this book. The ratings are really high on Mm -hmm. Goodreads. And I kind of hate, not hate, it just sometimes surprises me when I go against the grain so severely. Same. Yeah. I had such high hopes for this book. Mm -hmm. I thought it was going to be very different Mm -hmm. than what we got. Um, And I was very frustrated throughout most of this book. Same. Exactly the same. Book talk, you played me again. Played me Mm -hmm. again. And it's even not the, the worst thing we've read from Book Talk. No, not by a long shot. It's definitely but... not the worst, but definitely not very good either. I no. think if you read a lot in this fantasy, YA fantasy, or even, you know, adult fantasy genre, if you read a lot of gothic mm-hmm. books, you're going to be disappointed with this because you're going to have a lot of comparisons. Mm hmm. And this has been done much better in other places. But maybe, and this seems to be the, the the truth for a lot of the books that don't really work out very well. Like if I think if maybe this was my first, <laughs> second or third book. Yeah, I think if we hadn't been reading books like this for the last 10 years, mm-hmm. we would have been a lot more forgiving and a lot more invested in it. Um, I think if I had read this 10 years ago, I would have liked it then. Yeah. But now, now that I've read so many good fantasy books with really good world building and very fleshed out plot lines where it's not, where Mm -hmm. I don't have to question, why are we trying to save Emery? Emery keeps escaping the castle. Why are you putting him back when your whole goal is to save him? Yeah. Like that. I can't. I can't forgive that. Same. Okay, so let's rate it. Let's do it. Let's rip the bandaid off. Okay. Should I go first? You, you go, go first. first. Okay. It's a two. Mm-hmm. I still, well, I'm still invested enough to want to see what happens in the end. But I hope, please, Lord, when we start the second book, let's hit the ground running. Please. This book started so slow. Mm -hmm. It took 70% before I even cared really what was going on. It took a lot. Yeah. I had other things going on, but even if I didn't have other things going on, I would have struggled to get this done on time. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. No, this was a very slow, slow read. It was not at all captivating. I could not stop mentally editing it and revising it and offering suggestions for it. And I just... I'm also a two stars. Sorry, Mm -hmm. (laughs) I didn't get the star. Um, Yeah, no, I'm two stars. There are way too many massive plot holes. Um, The magic is not at all there, not fully fleshed out. Mm -hmm. Our main character has no personality, no depth, no nothing, no hobbies. Like, I don't... I think her hobby is literally just pity party out by the river. Yeah, and that's that's not somebody I want to root for. No, yes, it's I not. have pity parties too, but that's not who I want to read about. I read to no. escape, not you know, wallow in self pity. Right. The romance was 
so just insta love. We only yeah. like each other because we're hot and we keep lying to each other. And very surface, very surface level. Mm-hmm. The nightmare Shepherd King plot twist was not at all surprising, but you know what could have helped the love story? Had she been honest with him secretly from the beginning, mm-hmm. they could have had a bonding moment. They could have oh, bonded yeah. over that secrecy and held this secret together. Mm-hmm. That would have made them more beholden to each other and made me believe that. Oh, absolutely. If she had told yeah. him, like, as soon as she walked out of the room with his family and said, hey, wait a second, you have the other card. I have a secret. Mm -hmm. What if we test this out? What if I touch the other card? Let's see if I can absorb anything from your card. Let's touch other cards. Let's see what happens. Let me work on my magic instead of just wallowing in self-pity. Yeah, There There was so much potential with the story. And I think that's what hurts the most is there was so much potential. Yeah, the quest itself wasn't enough for the Mm -mm. book. No, no. If the Shepherd King had been molding her since she was nine Mm -hmm. and turning her into his secret assassin and having her hunt down the cards and she had been collecting them for the king in her head who wants them, like, why did he wait around until she stumbled into this? I know. Like, what if she was on the road because at the beginning, what if she was on the road because she was out looking for other cards? Mm Mm-hmm. Not on her way home, like a little yeah, sad after ass a person. pity party. I'm yeah. gonna walk home alone because I own won't walk with me. Uh, woe is me. My life is terrible. I'm alone, always alone, except for the nightmare in my head. Oh, boo hoo. Boo hoo. <laughs> no, there, there was so much potential mm-hmm. and it could have been so much better. And I see all of that and I wish I had read the potential and i don't of rate books here. on potential no no this so is that's two stars why. yeah this is this was not i'm excited to see what happens in book two because the the king took over her body like I, i'm excited i hope she doesn't come back all i gotta <laughs> say is this lord help our next talk about this book oh God. if it ends we might need to bring in some wine <laughs> might it might to- require wine or cocktails or something because if you thought this was bad you just wait <laughs> if i don't get some satisfaction out of this oh god it's oh God. gonna be hell <laughs> i'm gonna be texting you beforehand to be like all right are we bringing wine are we bringing rum are we bringing tequila right (laughs) how fucked up are we getting (laughs) yeah i feel like that's gonna yeah let's make sure we touch base beforehand so we can be prepared because y'all might get a surprise and two drunk (laughs) girls talking about this book oh it's gonna be fun (laughs) (laughs) okay so i think that's it next month we are like we just said discussing the second and final part of the duology two twisted crowns Mm -hmm which I suspect that has something to do with telling us something about the story, but. Well, she made that one crown on her head and he put the red rose in it. So are we talking about that Mm, or probably not? (laughs) (laughs) So frustrating. Yeah. Okay. We're going to call it anything else, Gacy. No, no, no. There's more I can talk about, but. We're we're walking away now. What we're going to do is we're going to save that for the book club. This goes yes. up before our book club meeting this year. I mean, this year, this month. This month. And you can share all your hate for this book <laughs> in the next <laughs> meeting as well. So, yeah, come join us and we'll have more. We'll have more. And, of course, everyone else will have their pluses <laughs> and minuses. All right, y'all, that's it for today. Thanks so much for listening to the entire episode. We appreciate you for doing that. Don't forget to like and subscribe wherever you are listening. And we'll see you next month. Take care of yourselves. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Did you enjoy today's episode? If so, please head over to Apple Podcasts or Spotify and leave a positive five-star review. It's a simple action that makes a big difference. 
You can also like this episode on your favorite podcast player or share it with your fellow bookworm friends on social media. Joining the Shelf Addiction Patreon family is another way to support us. For as little as $2 a month, you can help our team create even more amazing bookish content. If Patreon isn't your thing, consider becoming a supporter on the Spreaker app for just $5 a month and gain access to exclusive audio-only content. You can find me everywhere, including Instagram, X, and TikTok under the handle Shelf Addiction. Join our book club of the same name on the book club's website and app where we discuss all things bookish and more in a safe space. The Shelf Addiction podcast is a part of the Nerdy Maven Network. Thanks for tuning in.